Good morning class. Today we will be looking at pages 22 and 23 of unit 5. How was electromagnetism discovered? So what, we'll, we'll, uh, what we will do is I'm going to read and try to explain these pages and I also want you to practice reading these pages out loud at home to practice your pronunciation. So, how was electromagnetism discovered? The connection between electricity and magnetism was discovered by Hans Christian Ørsted in 1820. He noticed that his compass was affected when, a, when an electric current was switched on and off nearby. What is a compass? A compass is the little device that has the arrow that points north. So scientists and their discoveries. So here we have Hans Christian Ørsted. Ørsted discovered that, in addition to producing thermal energy, ele electric current produces a magnetic force. This force can be seen if we place a compass next to a wire in a simple electric circuit. When the circuit is switched on, the compass needle moves. When the circuit is switched off, the needle returns to its original position. Orsted saw this happen, but he couldn't explain the phenomenon. Two other scientists heard about his discovery and decided to investigate further. So these are the two other scientists, Andre Marie Ampere. So when M M Pere, <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right, heard about Orsted's discovery, he decided to study the relationship between electricity and magnetism. One of his most important discoveries was the electron. Ampere discovered that a common particle was producing both electricity and magnetism. He called this particle the electrodynamic molecule. Many years later, other scientists renamed, renamed the particle that M Ampere had discovered. They call, called it the electron. So remember, the electron is what carries the electromagnetic charge, which we discussed in the previous video. Michael Faraday was the other scientist that extended on Orsted's study. So like Orsted and Ampere, Faraday experimented with electricity and magnetism. He showed that by moving a loop of wire over a magnet, an electric current was produced in the wire. His experiments proved that a changing magnetic field produces an electric field. He called this invention the electromagnetic rotary device. This invention was the basis for the first electric motor or dynamo. Modern electrical generators are still based on his principle. So if we have a loop, what's a loop? A loop is a circle of wire over a magnet. He noticed that an electric current was produced in the wire. That's interesting. So he proved that changing magnetic field, a changing magnetic field, produces an electric field. So here, electricity can affect magnetism, but here, magnetism can also affect uh, electricity. So it works both ways because both affect electrons, and electrons are the key because that they are what passes the ele electromagnet magnetic charge. <clears throat> so, we can separate mixtures with magnets. In this picture, what can we see? There seems to be a big magnet at the top, and underneath there looks to be scrap metal. So this may be in a scrap metal yard, or a trash dump. Electromagnets produce a magnetic field when they are switched on. So, when electricity passes through them, 
they produce a magnetic field. So, again, electricity affects magnetism. There is no magnetic charge without electricity for electromagnets. So, electro, electricity, and magnets. But when electromagnets are switched off, the magnetic field disappears. Electromagnets are made from a wire coiled around an iron rod. So, imagine this is the rod. A rod is a straight piece of usually metal. And so, here, the rod is made of iron, and we have a wire coiled. Coiled means um, twisted around. So we have a wire twisted around the rod. The wire is then connected to a power source, such as a battery. When the circuit is complete, electric current flows along the wire and a magnetic field is generated. Electromagnets are used in recycling plants to separate iron and steel from plastic, glass or other metals. Ah, so this picture is most likely at a recycling plant and it's used to separate metals, metals from plastic, glass or other metals that may not be magnetic or recyclable.